Hello friends, welcome to the learning series on the great scientists and technologists of the world. Today we are going to learn about Charles Darwin, one of the most famous and renowned scientists of the 19th century. Kindly watch till the end to learn about Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin, an English naturalist, introduced the theory of evolution by natural selection, which became the foundation of modern evolutionary studies. Throughout his life, he maintained a sense of deep humility and a concern for his fellow man. If you are new to the channel, kindly subscribe and click on the bell button to get our subsequent videos. Let's go into the video. The 12th of February in 1809 was a day on which two great people were born. Two people who would change our world forever. One of them was Abraham Lincoln, and the other was the son of Robert Darwin. Robert Darwin was a wealthy physician with one of the largest medical practices outside London. He and his wife lived in Shropshire, and they had just had a little baby boy they called Charles. Tiny Charles had a very good life. He went to the best school in town. He had a very upper middle class upbringing that gave him many opportunities. Although his mother died when he was eight years old, Tiny Charles still enjoyed a golden childhood. Encouraged by his adoring sisters, an older brother, and his large, wealthy family. Charles, a young boy at Shrewsbury School, was influenced by Dr. Samuel Butler's headmaster, who pushed him to study classical literature and scolded him for wasting time on chemical experiments. At 16, Charles studied medicine at the University of Edinburgh but was shocked by the lack of anesthetics in surgery. He grew disillusioned with medicine and pursued a career in natural history. Meeting zoologist Robert Grant and geologist Robert Jameson sparked his interest in marine animals and Earth's history. Charles's father was very disappointed with his son's poor performance in the study of medicine, so in 1827 he sent Charles to the University of Cambridge to study theology. At the university, Charles was taught that God had made man and since God made man, man was the most supreme of all beings. Already Charles began to question things. This showed up in the poor marks he received in all his exams. Charles enjoyed socializing in sports at Cambridge, learning an entomologist who inspired him to collect beetles, despite Cambridge not offering a natural history degree. Charles met Reverend John Henslow, a botany professor who encouraged him to pursue his love for science. After graduating from Cambridge, Henslow encouraged Charles to embark on a sea voyage and explore the world. Charles was hesitant, for he had no experience whatsoever. Henslow convinced Charles to take the opportunity. So, Charles became an expedition naturalist and agreed to work on the ship HMS Beagle without any pay. On December 27, 1831, Charles Darwin sailed from Plymouth, England, on the HMS Beagle. The three-year voyage would take the ship to survey the east and west coasts of South America and continue to the Pacific Islands. The many years Charles spent exploring the South American continent and the offshore islands of the Galapagos polished his skills as a collector, observer, and theorist. But Charles was not physically fit to be an explorer. He was often seasick and spent long periods of time ashore, whenever the opportunity arose. Charles was fascinated by the exotic tropics. Although he was a bit weak, he was adventurous. He experienced armed political rebellions, rode with the famous gauchos in Argentina, and collected and identified many rare species of animals and insects. Charles seemed to like danger, and on one occasion he managed to save a boat from a tidal wave, putting his life in danger. He wrote to one of his sisters, saying, We have, in truth, the world before us. How many magnificent and characteristic views and how many curious tribes of men will we see? What are the fine opportunities for geology and for studying the infinite host of living beings? Is this not a prospect to keep up the most flagging spirit? During the voyage of the Beagle, Charles Darwin transformed into an independent and adventurous scientist, fostering confidence in his observations and problem-solving abilities. The isolation and exposure to new phenomena allowed him to develop a unique combination of strengths, including dedication to fact-gathering and theorizing about facts. Charles sent many letters to Henslow. 
letters that challenged the beliefs and theories of many leading scientists and naturalists. Henslow, in turn, read all these letters out to the scientific community. When Charles Darwin returned to England after five years, he was already a celebrity. Back home, Charles began to arrange his notes and theories. He continued to read voraciously in all fields of science to validate his theories. He was afraid, for he had stumbled upon a brand new theory. A theory that could actually prove that human beings were related to apes. A theory that could prove that man was not a superior animal. During this time, Charles married his cousin, Emma Wedgwood. They had ten children together. After living several years in London, they moved to a country house in Down, Kent. About 16 miles from the outskirts of London. Charles began to fall sick often and never again left the British Islands. He rarely traveled far from his home, Down House. Charles Darwin conducted experiments in his garden and wrote numerous books on geology, botany, and zoology. In 1859, he published On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection, proposing revolutionary theories of evolution and natural selection. He detailed how various forms of life evolved, excluding mankind's role. The book gained acceptance in scientific circles and became a bestseller. Darwin's controversial book was a significant contribution to the field of biology. In 1871, Charles Darwin published The Descent of Man, expanding the scope of evolution to show human psychological and physical similarities to apes. He argued that humans are no different from all other forms of life and have been influenced by natural selection forces. This book created controversy as it claimed humans evolved from Victorian-era people who believed they were direct descendants of God. Then, in 1872, Charles published The Expression of the Emotions in Man and Animals, in which he dared to claim that most particularly human behavior was quite similar to the behavior of animals. Charles had several minor heart attacks, from which he never recovered. His condition worsened, and on April 19, 1882, at the age of 73, he died at Down House. Charles Darwin wished for a simple burial in his village, his scientific colleagues convinced his family to lay him to rest in Westminster Abbey, a few feet away from the grave of Sir Isaac Newton. Does any variety of apes eat meat slash flesh of other animals? If you know the answer, please tell us in the comments section. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family.